Poland could cross a NATO red line by shooting down Russian missiles over Ukraine that threaten its territory, the foreign minister said. According to iNews media outlet, Warsaw claims that Russian missiles and drones fired at targets in Ukraine have repeatedly entered its airspace throughout the war, including a drone last week, leading to a series of flashpoints that have raised concerns of a direct clash between a NATO state and Russia. It is recalled that the alliance's Article 5 clause requires all member states, including the UK and the US, to respond to an attack on any member. Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski said his government has a duty to take action irrespective of NATO's official position against such a move, which it considers to constitute direct involvement in the war in Ukraine. Membership in NATO does not trump each country's responsibility for the protection of its own airspace. It's our own constitutional duty, Sikorski told the Financial Times. I'm personally of the view that when hostile missiles are on course of entering our airspace, it would be legitimate self-defense to strike them because once they do cross into our airspace, the risk of debris injuring someone is significant. Recall earlier this year, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said in an interview with Reuters that Western allies, including Poland, could intervene more directly in Ukraine's defense by shooting down Russian missiles. In response, the Polish defense minister, Vladislav Kosiniak Kamiz, told the Polish radio that Poland could not make any decisions on this matter on its own and that this decision must be made by all of NATO. He also referred to the US position of not wanting to escalate the conflict with Russia. Poland can only independently decide to shoot down missiles over Polish airspace. Earlier this year, a Russian missile entered Polish airspace during a massive aerial attack launched against Ukraine. The missile remained in Polish air for 39 seconds. According to the Polish Foreign Ministry spokesperson, Paweł Ronski, the Polish government has been discussing the legal ramifications of shooting down Russian missiles since this incident iNews says that Kiev and Warsaw signed an agreement in July that committed to explore options for intercepting in Ukraine's airspace missiles and drones fired in the direction of the territory of Poland. Sikorsky said that Ukraine would welcome such a move. Recall President Zelensky met with Polish Prime Minister Donald Tusk this week to sign a security agreement to further develop political, military and economic cooperation between the two countries and cooperate closely in the reconstruction of Ukraine as a sovereign and democratic state. The news coming out of Russia is grim. Ukraine's attack on the Kursk region has attracted most attention, but the incursion also represents a symbolic blow. Other information coming out of Russia also suggests hard times ahead for Russians, writes William Pomerantz, a senior fellow at the Wilson Center calling Russia the sick man of Eurasia. Kursk is a sacred place in Soviet military folklore where the Red Army won one of the most decisive and glorious victories of World War II. Today, Kursk is a symbol of military retreat and incompetence, exposing all the vulnerabilities that are now dragging Russia into this conflict of its own choosing. Deliberately comparing it to the Ottoman Empire, Russia today can be called the sick man of Eurasia. Russia is engaged in a war of attrition in which, despite its vaunted resilience, it now faces disaster on several fronts. The quick operation is now in its third year, and Moscow's only hope is that Ukraine is as exhausted as Russia. Putin has created a false narrative about the necessity of the conflict. In addition, Russia is going into battle with poorly trained conscripts who are now increasingly deserting. The FSB has used this opportunity to purge high-ranking generals against whom numerous criminal cases have been brought. The Defense Ministry is now headed by an economist with no military experience. His last advice was to rely on robots and AI, even though the standoff has left Russia with catastrophic losses in workers and engineers as well as access to technology. Moreover, the loss of life, especially in a country experiencing a serious demographic crisis, only foreshadows future problems. The coming collapse Putin and the Russian state are at the height of a social explosion. The attack on Kursk may be one catalyst, but there are other potential triggers. A partial list includes the loss of its status as an energy superpower, rising food prices and labor shortages.
Russia's economy is in shambles, with corporate bankruptcies on the rise and high interest rates for Russians seeking private loans. Putin's approval rating appears to have slipped, significantly, seemingly escaping the heavy hand of Russia's censors. Finally, Russia will no longer be able to claim the fashionable title of an emerging market, but will essentially be off-limits until the problems of all the deprivatized Western companies that Putin handed over to his cronies are resolved. It is no surprise that trust among Russian citizens is at an all-time low. Putin's inner circle includes relatives and his former bodyguard. The oligarchs seem to have no influence on government policy, and even the Russian press reports Putin's popularity is declining. Putin adds more responsibilities, but will likely only be blamed for weakening Russia's position.